Uh, well, we dyed our hair. Uh, how many times did you dye your hair? I did five. Five dyings to get it white. Matt did four. I did four. Brayden did like seven or eight. Six. six. He did six. I did my mustache. Got home. Wanted to dye our hair red. You dyed yours twice. I give it. I give it like two red dyes. Maybe a little bit more than two. But this was. This was all within like three weeks. I dyed my hair twice. It went pink like My Little Pony. I had to buy black hair dye. I've lost so much of my hair. It used to be so much longer. It's just done. So I just keep it under hat all day. If he doesn't, it's gonna fall out. If it, yeah, it's gonna fall out. Matt's dyed is quite a bit too. Quite a quite a bit of dye. About eight times nice. in one month. We'll but that basically, we got discriminated a lot. People thinking that because we wear overall shorts and have white hair, that we fall under the demographic of uh, of a uh, homosexual. Hom homosexuals. Although none of us are homosexuals, I guess uh, people with white hair who have overall shorts come across as homosexuals and sell this entire tour. I don't understand why. But we got a lot of those jokes on tour, just like people snickering. There, Matt was driving, oh, this is oh, at the oh, end of our time. tour, and there was this truck that was pulling out, and the guy just gave Matt like the funniest look. And so while he was driving past us, he's giving Matt the stare down. As he's driving <laughs> away, I'm just like, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Yelling at the top of my lungs, but just saying I love you. We got, uh, we got caught behind a, a car accident actually on the highway. We were stuck in traffic for like four hours. There was like a head-on collision between an RV and a car. Brayden and I, I donned my rollerblades and Steve always board. brings his rollerblades on tour. It's, it's fantastic, I love it. It was really like sticky traffic. It would stop for a good like 20 minutes and then it would go again. I bought this pogo stick at a garage sale. I've been looking for this pogo stick for like three years. Basically the world's greatest pogo stick and you can go up to eight feet on it in the air. It's like a $500 pogo stick. I see it and I'm just like, like I bring it up to the person, how much do you guys want for this? And they're like, oh, I don't even know what it is. Uh, $5? And I was just like, so I bought this thing, brought it on tour, we started getting pretty good. Started jumping off different things, got some footage of me falling down a couple of times off the stairs and stuff. But we're sitting here in traffic, me with white hair wearing like bicycle shorts, on my pogo stick in traffic. Everyone's just like, what's this guy doing? It's kind of weird, it's kind of a weird day. I, we're, we're definitely the oddballs. I don't think there was one place where we like, kind of fit in. No. We went go-karting. The day after Matthew's birthday, we met his relative, Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. Saskatoon. We meet him for the first time. He's a beautiful home, owns an entertainment facility. And he's like, guys, I got go-karts that go 110 kilometers an hour. You guys can ride them. You can ride up to 12 people at once. We had our, our band as well as Jasper Sunday. We had to wake up and we run over to this go-kart track five in the morning. We're just so excited to go in these things, racing each other. I just watched like Matt and Steve just duke it out the whole time. Matt was no, it was really... actually me and Brayden. I, I was Steven, too busy Steven spinning out. Spun out too many I times. thought I thought it was you guys being aggressive. That's why he spun out. No, I was aggressive with Brayden, and then yeah. Matt was mean to Brayden. You no, know, you know, was... who's a good driver. Uh, Mark, Mark. Jasper Sonyep's band. Yeah, me and him were duking out the whole he time. He plays like every single instrument. He plays bass, lap steel, guitar, banjo. He's fast, and he is very, very fast. Quick. He plays naive. It's Very like, humble, not naive, humble. Yeah, we're driving on the way over there, and it's like, so, have you guys played gun go-karting before? And Mark's like, never. And Jasper's like, don't listen to a word he says. <laughs> 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 we started off the record coming back from tour, feeling like the craziest that we've ever felt. It was just such a relief to, relief to be home. Three months. Three months on the road. Like, after that, I think after that trip specifically, um, we're just really used to being on the road now. The last month we've been very limited with our time spending with, with people and uh, spending time with our families, but on, on the road a lot of Skyping and stuff. Yeah. But for three months, like I think we're just used to being on the road now. We really like being on the road. But we got home from this tour, three month tour. Two days later, yeah, we decided we wanted to write a new record. So we met. We packed our tent and our sleeping bag. We headed to this great place on Vancouver Island called Sombrio. A friend of ours had told us about it, told us he really wanted us to write a song about it. It's just kind of a surf spot. It's really, really beautiful there. We, th we thought, like, why not let, let's go camp out there to start writing the record, or get, like, get, to get some ideas anyway. We brought, like, a little tape cassette recorder, a guitar, a couple of different instruments, some books for writing. Yeah, Cassio little keyboard. Just, we basically just spent three days there. Beautiful place, but it was raining the whole time. And our tent got soaking, blew over. We ended up staying in the, this little cave. Wrote a lot of great stuff, though, a lot of inspirational stuff, close to our hearts. Really, like, picturesque kind of place, I would say. And a good place to get inspired, just touring non-stop like packing and unpacking and playing the show actually having time to like be away from the world we got we got a bunch of bunch of the ideas uh, for the record went on tour again 
something about the road, like once you go out and you're on the road, you're touring and you're meeting people, seeing different places. Especially Canada, love, like Canada in the it. summer, like every province you just go through and it's different. So I had some good experiences and then we came back and started like finish the finish the songs and now we're recording it all. So we're really we're really happy with the the songs. I just can't wait to share them with people. I think it, it's the neat thing about our band and the way that the way that things have been happening for us over the years. Our styles always change and the music that we love always changes and we grow. Like that music inspires us to write even more different music and so it's just gonna be a, I think a continual process. That's something music. I think like I appreciate most about being in a band with these guys. They're willing to stretch themselves and try new things and uh, we're not limited to our, our instruments. Everyone's always trying something new, which is great. It's great to be in a band with people who aren't very close-minded. What we're trying to do is like make every instrument count. Not, nothing on stage is being used unless it's got a very crucial role. We've taken influences from like, people like Arcade Fire, even from Daft Punk on like, the old Neutron record. We were watching a video of Grant from a, one of our shows just recently, and he's doing like these crazy faces now, and it was reminding me of Wynn Butler from Arcade Fire. If you watch his eyes, like he does these crazy things with his eyes. He's like, got some crazy like, eyes. Like, like crazy eyes. Lately, I've been thinking about each lyric I say on stage now, thinking about the emotion behind each lyric. The way that, I'm, that I enjoy portraying those lyrics now is from my heart. I'm never specifically looking at the fans or looking at anything individually. I might, like, I look at people's shoes a lot of the time, like I'm a shoe kind of guy. So I look at a lot of feet, but I'll sit there and just, like, I'll just get crazy eyes and I'm just thinking about all the lyrics and just share my heart as much as I can and uh, come with, comes across really interesting. Um, so we want to play some shows in China. We're going to eat some food. We're going to see some sights. We've never been to China, so we're really very... Excited to fly in a plane together. I think it's gonna be pretty weird. For our yeah, band. is that the we first never, time we've all we've been in a plane together? together. Yeah, we've, we've never flown. I think we, I think we get seats beside each other too. We're September is China. It's October, we're going across the United States of America, all throughout the whole thing. November is Canada. And back through Canada. So another three months on the road for us. Another three months on the road. We're home for Christmas, for Christmas. with our families. We gotta get some great presents from China and from U.S. and across Canada. Bring them some gifts. I think this time. Yeah. Well, I, I, we brought them gifts last time. After we get back from tour, we're gonna. Go write a new record again. Release a new record. Tour it. I think that's one go thing. It again. That, I think that's one Repeat. thing we're enjoying. Like we released our album about a year and a half ago now. We've written a lot of songs. We didn't end up using a lot of them for this record, but um, I think that's one thing that I'm enjoying to be able to write music now to go back. Because originally that's the way that we were. That's the way behind Sapphire was. That we were more of recording artists than we were performers, and that's one aspect I love. Playing, it's fun. So much energy. It's great to travel with our music in the future to come home from additional touring in the fall now and to write another record it's intimidating because i know it's gonna be a lot more pressure for us like this one is me and matthew and, and steve now too really enjoy writing music and so i think that's going to be really cool for us a lot more writing music because that's what we love doing and it's a lot of work it's, it's a big process but yeah it's, it's interesting like looking at after we released the first record we want a good few months before we like wrote anything new. Over over a year I think we wrote like three songs or something like that. Like not a lot. And, and then, then and then this record, four months like we've written like, like ten. ten songs. It's it's a cool change. Like and, and I think we'll constantly be creating stuff like more, more often now instead of just like touring and then coming home and writing it'll be like a combination of the both. And I think that's cool. the future beyond Sapphire. Like for sure. Like if not touring for the rest of our lives, just writing music and um, just for ourselves, like that's what we love doing. So I, I think me, Matthew, and Steve will find ourselves in situations in the future, married, kids, and like still writing music. And even if we're not releasing it, just writing music and maybe releasing it. Maybe hopefully. people will see it. Like, hopefully but that's 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 what we do, and that's what we love doing. And uh, I think that's something I always look out for from us. Amen. Always creating, brother. Amen. I agree. I yeah. agree. I concur. Yeah. Yeah. I concur, doctor. I've actually really felt pretty bloated the last few nights. Like I feel really I don't weird. feel good. I haven't showered in a week. Seven days. Wow, that's disgusting. Um, I think I, I was talking about going for a month and I think it's actually gonna happen.